Hi, it's Matthew Holt, another THCB Spotlight, and I have with me somebody who's been on here before, a while back, Kulik Singh Rajput, who is the CEO of Bioformis. Um, Bioformis, Kulik, has done a lot since uh, we last talked, I think, basically back in late 2019. Um, you've, you've gone from uh, doing some interesting stuff with sensors and in the pharma business to doing a whole bunch more. But let's, first off, I'll start, you have a bit of news today. Uh, which has some big dollar signs behind it. So tell us what's the news today. Yeah, first of all, Matthew, thanks for having me, and it's uh, you know good to reconnect. Um, so you know uh, we raised um, you know our Series C finance, a Series D financing. Uh, we closed a three hundred million uh, dollar round, which was led by General Atlantic, um, and uh, you know CVS Health also participated in the round with existing investors. So really excited about, um, uh, you know, Series D, um, you know, and, and looking forward to the next stage of the growth. That's very exciting. And you have a new chairman as part of that. So tell us about, about him. Yeah, um, you know, um, I've, um, you know, known Omar Ishraq, um, you know, for almost over a year now, and we have been, you know, really building a good relationship. Um, you know, be, he has been a great, uh, you know, mentor to me and the company since then, and we officially uh, bought Omar Ishraq as the chairman of the board. So really excited to, uh, you know, uh, have him on board, use all the experience he has, uh, you know, running and scaling companies and really bring, uh, you know, all those experience to the company as we think about the next stage of the growth. Right, and he was at Medtronic for uh, a, a many years. And, and he's also, is he chair at Intel now as well? Yeah, so Omar, uh, you know, uh, ran Medtronic for over 10 years. Yeah. Um, and then currently he is uh, the chairman of Intel. Which is a company nearly as big as Bioformis. You know. <laughs> You'll be being quoted in uh, State of the Union addressing soon. Sorry, so, so let's dig in. Um, and that's a big round. I think that takes you, what does that take your total funding to? Something in the order of 500? Yeah, uh, around 400, uh, you know, 45. Okay, so I'm, I'm, off, I'm off by 50 with these days. And it's also quite interesting because Jess and I have been doing our health tech deals and we've gone, hmm, are these big funding rounds drying up? But apparently not, at least not in your case. So good. All right, so let's let's dig in. Uh, Bioformist does a lot of stuff and you've added a lot of stuff, not just people, but, but actually new areas, including uh, way back when there was work with, well, not way back when, but a few years ago, work with Novartis and working on sensors. There was stories about you and uh, using the sensors for covid detection during the during the uh, the, the early days of the pandemic um, and then more recently getting into chronic care management and, and uh, hospital at home a lot of different areas so can you kind of lay out what it is you do um, yep. and, and lay out what the vision is for doing all these different pieces which by the way there are many companies in each of those individual sectors you know who are, who are doing just that so just lay out you know what what is bioform is up to yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you look at Bioformis, uh, you know, Matthew, we, uh, you know, have two business verticals. Um, the first one is what we call as Bioformis Therapeutics, which we have been focused on. And Bioformis Therapeutics, uh, you know, really includes, uh, you know, two things within. One is our pipeline of digital therapies, which we are building. Um, and we continue to expand that, continue to run more clinical trials, evidence generation. And you might have seen last year, we received breakthrough designation for one of our lead products for a heart failure. Uh, we also work with pharma companies on uh, you know, two things. One is combination therapies. So we work with them way early in the clinical development journey and take them uh, you know, all the way until regulatory clearance. And these are combination therapies, drug plus the digital platform, and really you know, augment the value of the drug. Uh, but we also work with um, you know, biopharma um, on um, you know, those drugs which are already approved in the market. So, you know, really focusing on patient support programs, as well as focusing on safety monitoring for, uh, you know, uh, expensive drugs with significant side effect profiles like CAR T's. Um, and, uh, you know, today we work with almost, uh, you know, seven of the top 10 global pharma companies. And that's one part of our business. The second part of our business, uh, you know, was really propelled, um, you know, uh, and started because of the pandemic. And, you know, the, the platform, what we had built um, and we're using really had very good applicability within the care at home space. So when we, uh, you know, saw, 
uh, the market opportunity there, we basically had a platform uh, you know, built with all the right sensors, the analytics, the intervention uh, to really be able to manage patients across the continuum of care, uh, acute, post-acute and long-term chronic care. Um, so our second business vertical is really that bioformist care, which really focuses on managing patients across that continuum. And we have gone further and really focused on not just uh, you know, providing technology to our customer, but actual care management, uh, which includes operational services, uh, logistics, supply chain, shipping, um, you know, uh, as well as clinical care teams with nurses, physicians uh, who are managing the patients around the clock. So the care at home business, when we started, uh, you know, we started by, uh, you know, hospital systems as our customers, um, you know, and we were focusing on acute and post-acute as our cohorts of patients. However, um, you know, uh, you might have seen just a couple of months ago, we launched our virtual specialty care, which is the, you know, extending that continuum to chronic care and cardiology is our first focus where you're really, uh, you know, and now we are licensed in six states. We have, um, you know, uh, contracts with um, multiple health plans and in network with them, almost 9 million lives covered. And we are creating this referral networks to co-manage these patients, um, you know, and having this different a technology platform, early detection, medication management, um, you know, combined with actual clinical care team and navigators who are managing the patient to drive better outcomes. So really the company is focused on, uh, you know, two areas, uh, our therapeutics business and our care delivery, uh, you know, business. Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the things I want to get into in this conversation is how those two are going to integrate. Before we do that, though, how much um, there's a interesting and, and, and talk about people raising money right rare fire raised a bunch this week and there's a lot of money raised in decentralized clinical trials companies like evidation are doing work like this how much are you in that business of helping manage clinical trials for pharma is that, is that an area where you've gone you know at the home no so so the platform has the capability of doing yeah. that uh, you know matthew but uh you know again we want to stay focused on these two verticals um uh, there are uh, you know clinical trials which we run with pharma companies but those are in context with combination therapies those are in context with um uh, you know the bunch of uh, real world evidence work we do with pharma companies but um, it's less of being a clinical trial platform uh, you know and more focusing on our strategy of combination therapies fantastic well, that's, uh, that, that's interesting. Because obviously, you know, as you said, it's, it's a place one could go. There's a lot of opportunity to do a lot of different, exactly. lot of different things, of course. And we see people raising money in all these areas uh, mm -hmm. uh, and many companies talking about it. So let, let's, uh, let's dive in a little bit to how you're thinking about the, uh, the digital therapeutics in combination with the pharma companies and also the standalone. How do you see that business evolving Generally, now we have a bunch of these companies that have gone public, like uh, yeah. Therapeutics or some others. Um, and how how do you think that's going to evolve that bioformist? And sort of I, what I'm trying to get at is what's the potential for you for that business versus the care business? But just yeah. tell me a bit, bit more about where you're heading with that business. The, the, the of course. Uh, so so one of the things, uh, you know, Matthew, you you touched upon was very interesting. Both of these businesses are really driven by this single platform, what we have built, which we call BioVitals, right? Um, you know, and the technology assets are similar. It's modular and that powers both businesses. However, um, you know, uh, you know, there is a lot of synergies between these two businesses, even though we are building our digital therapies, the, the therapeutic areas which we have focused on are cardiology, oncology, and pain, uh, you know, and our care at home business, the patients we are currently managing involves those patients already. Uh, and as well as the virtual specialty care, which we are building uh, really is creating a distribution channel for all the digital therapies we are building, because once they get approved, we have the patients, we have the channels, we have the referrals to be able to commercialize these digital therapies much faster. And what that will enable us to do is do it much scalable, uh, in a scalable manner and in a cost efficient manner and improve our margins. So for the, how, and this is what I'll have on this one more time, because I've always been fascinated by this when I talk to the folks at the Digital Therapeutics Alliance and elsewhere about this is, how much does it matter that the tool gets a FDA approved for being a digital therapeutic? Yeah. Especially if you're 
potentially selling it, you know, and there are obviously companies who are trying to sell this just like a drug, get it approved, then go sell it to, you know, detail pharma, detail there, the physicians and, and, and move move on that way um, and then try and get it, you know, priced highly. And you see Akili doing that and Pear doing that and others. How, but, how, but, it, but there are other companies who say, no, this is part of general healthcare and it should be, you know, delivered through some kind of virtual clinical, virtual hybrid or hybrid clinic, you know, I can't think of a big health or something like that who, who's going the map path and not doing FDA regulation. How much does the FDA uh, yep. approval regulation matter to you on the digital therapeutics business? Yeah. So uh, specifically, uh, you know, the pipeline, what we have built and created, um, you know, uh, especially cardiology, oncology, and when it comes to manage those patients, Matthew, it's, it's extremely critical. And uh, the reason I say that is two things. One is the core mechanism of action for all our digital therapies is early detection. And second is automated medication management. And, uh, you know, if we really want to do that, we have to seek a, approval, uh, you know, so because these are, uh, you, know, uh, um, you know, digital therapies, which would actually have treatment claims in the label. And for us to be able to do that, uh, you know, we need to run rigorous uh, clinical trials to be able to prove. Of course, it's a long journey, um, you know, and takes, uh, you know, everything from proof concept to pivotal trials. However, um, you know, what that also enables us to do is, I'll give you an example. Today, the way we do automated medica or medication management is by clinicians. They review the data, they review our recommendation and make changes. However, if this is cleared by the FDA, um, you know, that automated way of doing it is safe, is effective, uh, we would be able to, um, you know, actually have less clinicians uh, and less clinician intervention in managing those patients, which would, uh, you know, um, um, you know, scale the program very fast. Excellent. So let's dive in a little bit into the relationship of bioformis with clinicians, both your own and others, right? So if yep. you've got the concept of, well, we're working with hospital systems, we're working with health plans who have their clinicians, uh, we're working, you know, potentially directly with, 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 with patients, these digital therapeutics. And then we have, a, uh, obviously we have these virtual uh, specialty teams, you know, or, yep. or chronic care management, virtual clinics, whatever you, want, whatever you want to call them, plus the hospital at home, which has a lot of, uh, a lot of yep. activity. How many of the clinicians who are interacting with your patients are your clinicians? How many are you supporting uh, other teams, other systems? And how much is going to be, you know, a, a one-stop shop within Bioformis for now? And where do you think that ends up? Yeah, great question, uh, Matthew. And, and again, you know, our mission is all about personalization. And as you know, within healthcare, every customer has, uh, you know, certain capabilities already built, um, you know, or have certain perspectives about do they want to manage it or let somebody else go manage it. So it's going to be extremely different for different customer segments. And, and the approach which we then took was saying, let's put this care model and put, make this entire care model turnkey. So that, uh, you know, even if we are using the, the clinicians and the nurse teams by the hospital systems, we'll provide them the right training, the right education to be able to manage our patients better. So today it's, it's I would say, ha ha, you know, 50% of our customers have, uh, you know, their own clinical teams managing patients using our technology. And for the rest, we have our, uh, you know, clinical team managing the patients on their behalf and escalating the patients uh, you know, who really require care to their attention. Do you think there's a potential eventual conflict in that? I've looked at this a lot and gone, okay, you know, yep. do we have new organizations who are managing, you know, particularly sick, chronically ill, and eventually hospital home type patients, you know, soup to nuts? Or are you a technology vendor to the, the systems? Some, you know, many people are both. I mean, you're obviously in that camp for now. But I wonder, is, is that something you think that you'll be, ever be forced to choose? Or do you think you'll be able to keep this going in, in this strategy for a long time? Yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, uh, as of now, and again, you know, we will evolve uh, as the market evolves, uh, Matthew, but, uh, you know, keeping hospital at home aside, looking at post-acute care, long-term chronic care, where we want to eventually get towards is us managing the patients. We control the outcomes, we manage the patients, and we want, and the reason I say that is because we want to even start taking risk on those patients eventually. Right. But for hospital at home, it's still new. It's still nascent. 
um, and everyone is learning. Uh, it's part of the waiver and we all are trying to learn and we want to be as flexible as possible. Uh, some hospital systems have vision of building their own hospital home at home program eventually, but want to start by letting somebody else co-manage the patients and then eventually get there. So we will evolve with how hospital at home programs evolve, but especially for post-acute care, long-term uh, you know, chronic care, we believe that we would want to head towards managing the patients ourselves. And is it a fair assumption? I don't know if you've spent all the money quite yet in your head, let alone on paper. I haven't sent you my invoice yet, so you need to calm down. But, but um, what, is it a fair assumption? There are a couple of disease states which are a big, a big deal in that uh, continuum of you know, long-term chronic care management that you haven't mentioned yet. Is it a fair assumption you're going to start heading towards those as well? I mean, diabetes is an obvious one, but there are mental health with others, and there are plenty of people in those spaces. So I don't know what you're thinking about in terms of strategy for that. Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, Matthew, for a you know, a complex, uh, you know, chronic condition is our focus. Uh, we have clearly indicated cardiology is our focus. Uh, you know, of course, we will expand into, uh, you know, oncology, we'll expand into respiratory and, uh, you know, expand, but, uh, you know, for now, we'll stay focused on cardiology, uh, you know, and, and scale that first. All right, I, I have some diabetes coming, I'll sell you later then. <laughs> All right. That's that's fascinating. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about the, the state of bioformis in the market. Um, you know, you were obviously doing a whole bunch of new things. You've mentioned some of the numbers, you know, six, six states involved. Nine, I think it was 9 million uh, health, health plan members, uh, you know, covered at this stage. Give me a sense about where you are. I don't know if you want to talk about revenue or clients, or just give me a sense, sense about where you are and where that's grown from over the last couple of years. Yeah. So uh, again, initially last time when we spoke, uh, you know, uh, Matthew, for our pharma customers, we, we had like one customer, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, today, as I mentioned, we work with, uh, you know, seven out of the top 10 pharma companies and, and we will continue to scale. And even within those pharma companies, we continue to expand in new disease areas, new drugs, and, and we continue to grow. Um, on the care at home business, we just uh, you know, started that business, uh, you know, uh, I would say 14 months ago um, and hospital systems have been our focus uh, you know nearly close to 20 health systems uh, you know partnerships and we uh, you know intend to scale and grow uh, you know double or maybe even three times this year so uh, you know really thinking about that scale and with this capital um, you know we of course are going to accelerate our organic growth plan but we also have a very solid inorganic growth plan in place uh, Matthew, to uh, you know, think about penetration and scale. Uh, I would, I would assume so. Um, that uh, you know, not, nice to have some ammunition if you want, want to use it for uh, looking at interesting new businesses. I'm sure there'll be a few people calling you up now. Um, so let, let, let's talk uh, two things to just to close up. So first one is uh, when I met you, you were living in Singapore. You were working a bit in Asia. There was a bit of US stuff going on. There was a bit of Europe going on. Give me, now you've moved to Boston. Give me a sense of the distribution of the client base and of the employee base. Where is Bioformis and where are Bioformis' clients? And, and is that going to stay that way or is that going to change? Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm now based in Boston and, um, you know, our headquarters um, is Boston. So we, uh, again, grew our team from, uh, you know, where when we spoke, we are now over 500 employees, uh, you know, globally. We have three offices, uh, Boston, India and Singapore. Um, and a majority of our customers and the market focus at this point in time, Matthew, is the U.S. Uh, there's so much to do here, um, and we would stay focused on uh, the U.S. for now. Uh, however, uh, some of the pharma partnerships, uh, you know, take us international. And, uh, you know, having presence in Asia gives us that added advantage uh, to really be able to, uh, you know, run projects and run, uh, you know, operations in that part of the world. So the last thing, uh, you've been growing, you know, like, I think, we're, so you, I don't know how many, I don't know when you were one employee or <laughs> it was just an idea on a napkin. So like a hundred employees, then you get to 500. That's, you've added, you know, you couldn't have a couple of decent sized companies, you know, in, in that. And obviously there's a, doing it in the middle of a pandemic when you couldn't all necessarily get together. It's probably been a bit challenging. Just give me a sense about what the experience has been like for you doing that and what have been the big stresses and what has gone perhaps more easy than you thought just in terms of growing the company the way you have them. 
Yeah, <laughs> great question, Matthew. Again, uh, you know, certainly, um, you know, the pandemic has, uh, you know, affected the way we live, the way we work, and the way we even grow companies. Um, you know, uh, especially our mission really is uh, to empower, uh, you know, uh, our patients with the right tools and technologies and enable them with the right personalized care. And, uh, you know, um, I think the, you know, more you follow those mission and consistently deliver that in the marketplace and consistently show traction, uh, you know, uh, we are fortunate that we are able to attract the right talents. Um, you know, and um, we have been growing, uh, you know, massively, in fact, last year uh, in 2021, in terms of the team size, uh, we built our operational team, operations team, customer success team, we built our, uh, you, know, com uh, you know, commercial team, and we will continue to scale that. So, uh, you know, it's been an interesting experience, all virtual, um, and in, in, in uh, the business at Bioformis, uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, in person always, uh, you know, adds value, especially for deal making. However, uh, you know, um, the team really came together um, and we were able to, uh, you know, impact a lot of patients lives during COVID and we feel privileged and, uh, you know, proud to be able to do that. So give me one thing that was easier than you expected and one thing that was harder than you expected in the last couple of years. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, one thing that was hard than uh, expected is really, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, we never felt, uh, you know, how much valuable, uh, you know, time spent in person was valuable. Um, you know, we never appreciated that. And one thing I've, uh, you know, started to learn to appreciate is when you have people in the room, you get so much more done um, as compared to, uh, you know, doing it virtually. Of course, uh, you know, the thing that has been easy is, uh, you know, really staying, uh, you know, true to the mission, uh, you know, quickly pivoting and also starting to manage uh, patients with COVID and having contracts with some governments, uh, you know, was, was really rewarding. And uh, one thing which was, uh, you know, easier than what before was how fast hospital systems and other customers were trying to adopt technologies and how fast these deals were getting closed. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was impressive. All right. So uh, some things are tough. You like being in person, but it's good to see the skids being put under those potential customers. And I understand why. That's fantastic. Well, Kodi, congrats on the news. Congrats on the continued growth uh, for Bio Bioformis. Um, really exciting seeing what you're doing. I think there's a, you know, the, there's clear to my mind a number, a number of people who are, who are looking at that big, you know, what I call the, uh, the, 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 uh, um, the continuous clinic of how do you manage patients, you know, wherever they are and whatever they're doing with the, with the team and the resources you need to put it together. And you're certainly one of those ones, you know, pushing ahead in that scale. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that works out. This is Matthew Holt from GCB. I've been speaking with Kuldeep Singh Rajput. He is the CEO of Bioformis, announcing a very big round from General Annex, CVS Health and others today. Kuldeep, thanks for your time. Thanks, Matthew.